there'll be a, a CD with affirmations for you at the end of the time. And that's why it's important that you sign the little clipboard, because if you don't sign, we won't know. In the Bible, it says, in Hebrews, it says, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen. Some other words for faith are confidence, sureness, reliance, trust, assuredness, certainty, conviction, acceptance. So I'll give you a, an example of faith, and I'm sure that many of you have read about Sister Mary Catherine. She was driving down the road and she ran out of gas. She didn't have a gas can. And there was a little filling station up ahead and she walked up and they didn't have a gas can. And she went back to her car. And she got a bedpan. <laughs> and she went and got gas. And she came back and she was putting it in her car. And somebody drove by and they said, well, that's faith. <laughs> wow, sister, I wish I had that kind of faith. So there are some things that you and I experience that we have no question about, that we have absolute faith in. And can you name some of them? That you'll wake up tomorrow morning. That the air will work. That all will, be well. that all will be well. The moon will rise. The sun will rise. My sister loves me no matter what. The, your sister loves you no matter what. That you're following God's will. No more? <laughs> Nothing else you guys have faith in? When you flip that switch, the lights are going to come on. When you hit the switch, the lights are going to come on. And when you start to turn the starter, that your car is going to start. Faith in yourself. Pardon me? Faith in yourself. Faith in yourself. God believes my prayers. God believes your prayers. Gravity works. Gravity works. <laughs> Absolutely. There's no question about that, is there? We live in Florida. The grass is going to grow. And it's going to rain. And the sun's going to shine. And God is always there. Now, some of the things that you've said, like faith in yourself and God is always there, are the things that we really need to have faith in, but I'm not sure that we always do. I believe that there are things like the sun's going to come up that you have such absolute faith in that you never question it. But when it comes to God, do you ever question? Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. We do question. So I want us to have that same kind of faith in God that we have with the sun coming up and the grass growing and the, and the moon rising and it's going to rain and the sun's going to shine. Three places I want us to have faith. Faith in the goodness of life. Faith that law works. And faith in ourselves. Now, Faith in the goodness of life. We have a saying, God is good when? All, All the time. time. That's our belief. Here at Unity, we don't believe that God is wishy-washy, vindictive, punishing, judgmental, good on Sundays only. <laughs> We don't believe that God is inconsistent. We believe that God is consistently good. Constant. 
never changing, always good. This is a cartoon. Fuzzy. Rob says to his dog, Satchel, crud, I forgot I have to work next weekend. Well, at least my boss won't be in. Every cloud has a silver lining, eh? And Satchel, what does that mean? Rob, mm, like even in a bad situation, there's some good. Satchel, ah, it's like the dog expression. Rob, what's that? Satchel, for every trip to the vet, there's a ride in the car. <laughs> there's a little book, Row, Row, Row Your Boat, by Stephen Lane Tyler. And he said, everything in the end is good. If it's not good, it's not the end. Now, you got that? In the end, everything is good. And if it's not good, it's not the end. That's a pretty powerful statement. It, that's what we want to have faith in, that whatever we see, whatever's going on, has a good end. The minute we start looking at the circumstance... Where's our faith go? So when we see something that appears to be less than good, what I want our, our first response to be is, oh, in the end, everything's good. So if it's not good, it's not the end. So as we look out there, as you go through this week, and you're in the midst of something, and it doesn't seem like it's so good, then just say, go back to that thought. Ah, everything is good in the end, so this must not be the end. God is good all the time. So if you bring your thought back to that, just raising your thoughts gives you the opportunity to be open to a different solution, to a different perspective. I know when I'm looking at a problem, I can't get beyond the problem. Emma Curtis Hopkins, God is life, thus we are to have confidence in life as the outcome. Life will win. We must be firm on this point. God is truth. We must believe that the truth about the good will always act. We must be sure. We must be sure that God is good all the time. And Jesus talked about it. He talked about that. And what did he say that we had to have faith? How much faith do we have to have? just as much as faith as a grain of mustard seed. So no matter what, how big what's going on, all it takes is that little bitty bit of faith, that little bit of knowing that God is good to help us beyond that point. So we want to know that we want to have faith that God is always good. We want to have faith that law works. Now, when I'm talking about law, I'm talking about spiritual law. And so we've been talking about these spiritual practices. And what I want to reaffirm is that spiritual practices work when you practice. But what happens is how many times do we write a vision and read it for two weeks and put it in a drawer and forget it? How many times do we write a goal and put it, put it away? Now, sometimes what I have found, I'll have written something and I'll take it out and, gosh, it's happened. 
But there are some things that I write, and if I don't keep it in front of me, if I don't use the power of my imagination, if I don't use those God-given talents and practices, when I don't tithe, oh my gosh, because I so believe in tithing, when I don't tithe, it shows up. And it shows up in some kind of repair I have to pay. You know, or, uh, buy a new air conditioner or something like that. Each one of us has this opportunity to work these practices and keep on working them. But what I hear is I hear people saying it doesn't work. Have you ever said it doesn't work? It only works if you work it. So God is good all the time and our practices work when you and I use them, when we use them simultaneously, when we use them consistently. And the third thing I want us to be up about faith about is faith that God made us so that song we sang, I am as God created me. And they were in that beautiful, they were singing back in there, you're love, you're beautiful, you're holy. I am as God created me. How would it be if you walk through your day, I am as God created me. I am, I am, I am as God created me. What if you walk through your day like that? What would your day be like? How would you approach things differently? It works for us individually, and it works for us corporately. And by that, I mean it works for us for ourselves, but it works for us for our families, it works for us as our nation. It works for us as our church. Um, I'm always reminded that in uh, spiritual economics that Eric Butterworth says that the economy is what we agree upon. And so when we agree on a recession, that's what we have. And I think that what's happened, what we're seeing now, is that we've all gotten tired of recession. And so now we're agreeing that things are coming back. I don't do much political, but I was really personally not really ready for us to bomb, just to bomb Syria. And I believe that as a country, there was a whole movement of people that were saying, let's don't bomb Syria. It didn't happen. We got of one mind. We joined our hearts and we joined our minds. And, and so I believe that of all the problems that come up, if you and I can get of one mind, we can solve those problems. We had a situation here at church. The situation is that some of us wanted to have be peace. Now called the connection practice in schools. And Becky went with the children. But Becky got this idea at the board meeting. She said, why don't we tithe that to the community? And we held a, 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 the class, and we had 29 people. We've already got our next class scheduled. We've had people from the school board calling us. I believe that we will get this in our schools. It's a positive practice to help children deal with their emotions. It raises test scores and reduces violence and bullying. Enough of us held the idea until it became a reality. It's faith. It's what faith does. Um, Anne and I 
looked at the carpet and looked at the chairs and then I don't know how many of us that were looking at that and remember how we had the, the poster with the chairs on the thing that you know a hundred dollars and at first it was really slow going you know two chairs four chairs seven chairs 17 chairs and don't they feel good we got together. We all got on one page. Right now, we're looking at what are we going to do about the building. And we're all working to get on one page. We're surveying. We're taking surveys. There's a survey that, that's in your bulletin. That's, if you go to our website and push a button, you get to the survey. We have a computer set up in the back. You can take the survey. If you don't want to go on the computer to do it, we have some ones that you can handwrite and we'll put them on the computer. We're trying to get your input so that we all start getting on one page. So I have two stories that I want to share with you. One of these stories is about a church in Montclair, New Jersey. And the minister there is named Elizabeth. And she and I know each other. Last year at conference, she was asking people, how do you finance a church? They had found a church that they wanted to buy. They'd found a building that they wanted to buy. It's a church building. And her goal, they'd raised money, but they didn't have enough money. A developer made an offer on the building. And the church, the people that owned the church, called Elizabeth and said, you have until 5 o'clock today, or we're going to take this other offer. We know y'all have been trying to raise the money, but we have another offer. Elizabeth got on the phone and she called everybody she knew. She couldn't figure out how to do it. Her secretary gave her a phone slip. And what Elizabeth says, you know, I'm praying, I'm calling, I'm praying, I'm calling. She said, I kept seeing this phone slip. And she said, you know, I felt kind of guilty, but I was working on getting the money for the church. said I'd called everybody I could think to call. She calls the name on the slip. And it was a doctor in town. He went to the other church. He did not want to see it torn down. He said, I have a million dollar line of credit. I will hold the building for you until I will put my million dollars up until you have the money to pay for. Their church was on had a vision. A miracle happened. And when I talked to Elizabeth, I said, can I, call, can I tell your story in my church? She said, sure. She said, and when you're telling my story, she said, call Julie Vance. And she said, because she's the one I told her story. So I called Julie Vance. And Ju Julie Vance is in Palmyra, No, it's not. It's, it's, it's Montclair, New Jersey, and Palmyra, Pennsylvania. So Julie and her, church, and her congregation were meeting in a Best Western. And they'd been meeting in a Best Western for two years. And they'd outgrown the meeting room at the Best Western. And they were looking for a church. One of the board members found a log cabin on Main Street. And Julie said, you know, she and the rest of the board looked at it, and they thought, eee, this doesn't look like what a church, what we want for our church. We, we deserve better than this. And the, she, she kept saying, well, something better is going to come along. And the board member said, well, what do you think you're going to do? you want to find some other place on Main Street? 
And Julie said, yeah, but the log cabin's just not right. So week after week, they prayed. One day on Sunday, she leaves church. She goes home. She opens up the Sunday paper. She looks in the want ads, something she said that she really never did because she had no particular reason to look in the want ads. She was looking at, she said, I, was, I looked at cars, and she said, I just kept looking. And she said, I found a want ad for someone asking for churches that wanted a building. And she said, she applied. And her church was selected. And guess where her church was? On Main Street. The reason I wanted to tell those stories is I've heard, I've heard some little bitty voices that were saying, yeah, we want to do that, but. We want a better church, but. We want more room for our children, but. And so what I realize is that we just need to let our faith grow. We need to let our faith grow. When they built Unity Village, it started with a penny. Somebody handed Charles Fillmore a penny and told him, here, start your church with that, the Unity Village with that. And he said, I will. And they did. People ask Myrtle Fillmore, was she praying for prosperity? And she says, no, I am praying that my faith holds out. So what you and I want to do is hold faith. Faith for the things in your life that you want. For the, whatever, the, or the, whatever the goodness that is that you want in your life. We want you to have faith in that. To hold that faith. Every Tuesday and Thursday we're here praying. We have a prayer list. Our prayer, Baby Wilder was on our prayer list. We've had other people on our prayer list. Ellie and I one day, we prayed somebody conscious, didn't we? Just believe. Have faith. So I want us to have faith individually, and I want us to have faith corporately in your families, in, this, in our church, and in our community. There's nothing that we can't do. Everything is possible. Meister Eckhart said, there is nothing else we can do that is so beautiful as to put our complete trust in God. God never failed anyone who trusted him greatly, but rather through him, God does great things. Are you ready for God to do great things through you? If you'll take a deep breath and maybe close your eyes, I have some... I have some faith affirmations. And as I say these, I invite you to let my words be your words. I am aligned with the upward progressive movement of life. The mark of success is now upon me. It is my divine destiny to succeed, and it is God's business to help me now. I have confidence in my God-given guidance and ability. I see myself going from success to greater success with God's rich help. My success, big, powerful, and irresistible, now appears. I have insurmountable faith in the perfect outcome of every situation of my life since God's infinite intelligence is in absolute control. My self-confidence is mounting as day by day I gain greater mastery over self. Today I live as the flow of God's great good. Today I live as the flow of God's great good. Amen. Thank you.